Get this money, get this money, let's get this money. About to shoot a video. It's time to shoot a video. It's time to shoot a video. Damn, it's been a minute. God damn it, Wayne. You take too long to make these videos. Your audience is looking to learn things from you. You are a bad example, man. But you know what, y'all? I'm gonna make it up to y'all because I'm going to be dropping banger after banger. Things are gonna be changing around here. We're, we're slowly ramping up to becoming more consistent as a YouTuber. Anyways, while I got gum in my mouth, I'm already messing up. I'll be right back. Let me, let me go ahead and get rid of this gum real quick. All right, now that I'm not being obnoxious and I'm not chewing gum in y'all face, I also want to get my water. Hold on one second. Okay, water has been acquired. Water has been acquired. I'm gonna go ahead and lubricate real quick. Mm. So it's been years since I've been a software engineer and one of the things I noticed that I'm always looking for ways to increase my efficiency when it comes to my workflow. The thought process behind this is an obvious one. If I can increase the efficiency in which I do things over and over, I can actually spend more time programming and coding. Also, if I can organize my workspace in a way that decreases cognitive overload, I free up way more mental space to actually dissect the problems that I am working on. I think workflow efficiency is not discussed enough in the space of software engineering. So in today's video, I wanna give you guys four tips on how to become a more efficient programmer. Let's get into it. Tip number one is time management. So we live in a day and age that is full of distractions. There are things pulling our attention left and right at any given time. And seeing as how we work from computers, which contain the internet, which contains memes and social media and email and instant messengers and all of those type of things to distract us, it is way more important for us to be able to isolate and incubate our mental space when we are working on the things that we need to work on. So I have a couple recommendations here today when it comes to time management. The first recommendation is to set aside time to do things that are not programming related, such as answering emails or anything of that nature. Once you have answered these things and once you have set aside the time to actually reply to people, assuming you aren't expecting anything important, go ahead and mute these mediums so you can go ahead and set aside time to actually work on your programming related task. As far as coming up with the task that you wanna work on for the day, I personally start out the day by creating a task list of the things that I wanna prioritize for that day when it comes to programming things. I personally use an app called Todoist and I'll throw a link down in the description below for you guys to download that. However, good old pen and paper will work just fine here and there are also many other apps outside of that that can do exactly the same thing. The main point here is that you have some type of list that you can go back and refer to to keep you focused and understand what your priorities are for the day. Once I have this task list ready, I choose one that I think is most important for the day. So I'm like, okay, I have five things that I want to accomplish for today, but which one is most important? So at that point in time, I prioritize. So I say, okay, this is the most important task for me to get done today. And that's the thing that I start working on first. So I recommend you guys do the same thing. You know, what's most important for you to accomplish. And that's the one you start digging in right away while your mental resources are completely there because you're fresh, you just woke up, you got your coffee or tea or whatever it is that you have, and now you're ready to go. You're ready to get going, you're ready to kick ass, you're ready to do whatever you need to do. Also, I have to note that it's okay if you don't get through everything in your list. You will get better and better at making estimates as to what you can accomplish in the day, and your list will become more and more realistic and accurate as you continue doing this. So it's okay if you don't get through everything that you listed for that day. So remember, when it comes to time management, there are two factors that are important here. The first is creating a distraction-free environment, which I recommended at the beginning by setting aside that time to answer emails and things of that nature. And then another thing is task prioritization. So taking the things that are most important, getting rid of everything else in your mental space, taking the things that you feel are most important for that day, throwing them on a list, and then prioritizing them and chipping away at those for the day. The second tip on my list is window management. You guys already know, you guys already know. So organizing your space and what you see on the screen is super important as a programmer. This is especially important if you use command line and I'll get into that in a bit, so. When you have your windows where you need them, going between development environment and other software becomes a lot more seamless, which obviously will increase and speed up your workflow. So here I have a couple of suggestions for you guys when it comes to window management on both Mac and PC. On Mac, there is a window management application called Magnet, and this application is very good, guys. I will throw a link to that in the description down below. I don't know how I went without this, 
But now that I have it, it's like, okay, I definitely need to have this way earlier because it gives me the ability to snap windows wherever I want, given keyboard shortcuts, which are customizable, by the way. You are able to customize your keyboard combinations in a way to where you can move windows wherever you want. Windows, on the other hand, has very good keyboard shortcuts built into the OS. I'm sorry, Mac, you actually lose here because I had to go buy something external so that I can get my window management so I can snap my windows. So there are various keyboard shortcuts using command and the arrow keys in which you can move your windows wherever you want them. And I recommend that you guys learn these and add them to your workflow so that you can place your windows wherever you want on the screen because that will definitely come in handy when it comes to organizing what you are actually seeing on your screen. Tip number three on my list is command line. Now, when I was first starting off as a programmer, I saw command line as this intimidating beast that I wanted nothing to do with. Now my whole relationship has changed with command line. I love having my command line window right next to my IDE so I can go ahead and throw anything that I do all the time. I can throw the command in there and it just boom, it happens, right? It works for me. So I use command line for many things, including but not limited to source control. If you guys don't know what source control is, I plan on making a video on that in the future, but basically in layman's terms, it's a way to manage and share your code base with others. I use it to build my project in Android. So we use Gradle, so you can throw Gradle commands inside the command line to actually build your project. Also use it for file management. So if I need to create a folder or delete a folder or delete a file, command line is very good for that as well. There's many things that command line can do. It's a very powerful tool. On a side note though, I want to say that if you are familiar with source control and you know about the graphical user interfaces for source control, I am not condemning those. I do actually use those in certain circumstances because they do make some things easier. So I'm not saying just don't use them to scrap them and only use command line. What I am saying though is that in most cases, I tend to lean towards command line because I can have my window right there. I can type my command out or I can just press the up arrow key to go to a previous command that I've been using and then just execute that bad boy right then and there. And so I'm going back and forth between coding and command line a lot more seamlessly. Like I said, I'm not condemning the graphical user interfaces. Some of them are very good. Source tree is super good. I love it, I use it. But at the same time, command line is my baby as of these days. So I recommend that you guys learn command line if you wanna become a more efficient developer. Last but not least, for my tips for increasing your developer efficiency is to learn keyboard shortcuts. The reason that I think it's important to learn keyboard shortcuts is it keeps your hands on the keyboard. I know that sounds really obvious, but moving your hands from the keyboard to the mouse, that actually takes time and that adds up. You know, I know it may seem like, oh, it doesn't take that much time, Wayne, whatever, what are you talking about? But think about it though. If you're programming for years, right? And you move your hand, you have to move your hand from the keyboard to the mouse over and over. Just think about like, that might be half a second each time, you know? It also depends on, you know, how well your bones work, your joints work and all of that stuff. So like, think about how that compounds over time, right? If you can keep your hands on the keyboard to have the computer do whatever you need it to do, then that increases your efficiency. So I have a few keyboard shortcuts that I recommend you guys work with, or at least learn if you work with an IDE. And I have some OS level keyboard shortcuts that I recommend you learn. When it comes to an IDE or integrated development environment, if you guys don't know what that is, it's basically a way for you to code that has autocomplete and all these nice features built into it. So you're not, not just texting or coding on a notepad. So if you have an IDE, there are a few keyboard shortcuts that I recommend that you guys learn. These include, but are not limited to searching for a file, opening a file, global text search, in file text search. Some good OS level keyboard shortcuts to know are snapping windows. We talked about that in tip number two, locking your screen, searching for a file or application. And of course there are many more keyboard shortcuts out there. So I recommend you guys go ahead and search through what the keyboard shortcuts available to you are and figure out which ones can help you speed up your workflow and add them to your arsenal. So there you guys have it. Those are some of my tips that I have when it comes to increasing your efficiency as a programmer. So hopefully you guys can add some of those to your arsenal. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Don't be shy, go ahead and join the family here. We will be dropping a lot more software engineering knowledge out here. I love to teach you guys and love to educate you guys and help you grow as software engineers. If there's anything that you want me to cover in a future video, or if there's any questions that you want to ask me personally, be sure to click that link down in the description below and follow me on IG and shoot me a message on there. Love to hear from you guys, but thanks so much for tuning in and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.